Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> the, room is not, the room is not so crowded anymore. All the blockchain people left, apparently. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm uh, going to present um, a query, graph query language proposal um, called Gcore. Um, to introduce a little bit myself, um, I'm a, a graph database uh, systems researcher from uh, TU Dresden. Um, <clears throat> and I did research on graph data management, schema evolution, schema flexibility, adaptive indexing, and other topics. And uh, next to that, more industry-related activities uh, are together with um, SAP HANA Graph and the Open Cypher project uh, Stefan told us about earlier, and uh, also the LDPC uh, Graph Query uh, Language Task Force. Um, which is the uh, entity who um, uh, came up with G-Core, <coughs> which is the talk uh, about the the, uh, the, the talk uh, will be. Uh, what is LDBC? Um, <coughs> some people may know LDBC is the Linked Data Benchmark Council, um, which uh <coughs> was founded out of a EU research project. And it's a non-profit organization that uh, is devoted to uh, specifying uh, benchmarks for graph database systems to make systems uh, comparable in terms of their performance. Um, and out of that work, uh, or when you want to uh, define benchmarks, you have the problem that you have to define queries, which are run by the benchmarks. And then uh, <coughs> you run into the problem that uh, it's hard to do that for a graph database system because there's no standardization um, <coughs> of graph query languages, which was sort of the uh, motivation to, to have a work uh, group on graph query languages. Um, and this, this working group or this task force um, consists of, uh, of a group of people, um, one half from academia, uh, like myself and the, the other half from, from industry and <clears throat> more or less uh, various, from various vendors um, of graph database systems um, uh, like NEO, of course, but also SAP and Oracle, uh, Sparsity, etc. <clears throat> and uh, the, the nice uh, feature of that forum is that it uh, combines uh, practical experiences in, in how people use uh, graph query languages, um, how they how we can implement systems with them. Um, <clears throat> uh, this uh, combines this with um, the uh, <clears throat> um, more theoretical uh, knowledge um, from uh, academia. So what are the complexities of certain uh, query language features, um, et cetera. So the result of that work, so the, 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 the task force worked for roughly two years, and the result of that work is now uh, this query, graph query language proposal called G-Core. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it is uh, accepted as a, a SIGMOD paper uh, and will appear on this year's SIGMOD. And if you are interested in uh, the details already, uh, you can go to this uh, preprint linked here on the slide. Uh, <clears throat> so to explain G-Core a little bit more, uh, <clears throat> let's start with what is G-Core and what is it not. So G-Core is not a graph database system, um, but it's a graph query language. So it's a language specification. It specifies a syntax and a semantics. Um, <clears throat> so there's no system you can download, install, and then run these queries. That is not, was not the intention. Um, <clears throat> it's not commercial or proprietary, um, but it's a design of a query language um, <clears throat> um, of this uh, mixed group of people from industry and academia, uh, <clears throat> which tries to blend these uh, different sets of experiences uh, t together in one uh, language proposal. Uh, which we think is a good uh, direction for graph uh, query languages. In that sense, it's also not a standard. Um, <clears throat> doing standards is really hard and involves a lot of politics, etc. And 
the nice thing about this LDBC group was that we were mostly able to keep politics out of it, so really concentrate on the matter of uh, de designing a good uh, 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 query language. And we also did, didn't want it to have all possible uh, 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 features, but concentrate on a, on a core of features which we think um, are crucial uh, uh, for a good graph query language. Uh, so the intention is more to provide sort of a vision where we think uh, graph query languages that, that are actually implemented in systems, where those sh uh, should evolve to. Um, so what, the, what we think the, the future of graph query languages should look like. Um, <clears throat> G-Core, to, to get a little bit more into the details, G-Core is based on the graph query, uh, the, sorry, the property graph data model. Um, we already had a nice introduction by, by Stefan uh, to the query model, so I will more or less skip over that, but essentially a graph of uh, rich objects. Um, <clears throat> and when we started with the work on G-Core, we sort of tried to formulate uh, certain challenges which graph uh, query languages face, um, or what we see um, <clears throat> from existing um, uh, query languages. And the first challenge is that uh, good query languages in general, so that does not only apply to graph query languages, is uh, that query language should be composable. Um, that, mean, that means that you can take an, uh, one, uh, a result of one query and uh, use that as an input to another query. As you can do in SQL uh, ever since, uh, but with the most existing graph query languages you cannot really do that, or you can do it just in very limited uh, ways. So what we wanted to achieve is what we call a closed query language. That means a query language which is, in the mathematical sense, closed over its data model. So in input and output uh, follow the same data model. And by that, you, uh, your queries become composable. And then, of course, you have to see that you have uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> certain extension points and uh, subqueries, et cetera, to, to really make, make use of this comp uh, composability. Um, the second challenge which we, tr which we try to address is our, our paths. Um, paths are a very fundamental um, <clears throat> uh, abstraction on, on, uh, upon graphs. Um, <clears throat> and you want the query language to be able to, to reason about that and, and, and process paths. And what we see in existing query languages that, that uh, uh, the, you have query um, <coughs> possibilities, but uh, it's really hard to further process uh, paths. And uh, <coughs> the best what you currently get is that you can sort of extract the path of the query language and then uh, further process it um <coughs> down the line in your application. Um <coughs> what we want to um, have is that uh, paths should be a first class citizen in the uh, query language and in the data model, and that's uh, with GCore we, we made a proposal for that, how that could look like. And uh, the last challenge is uh, that we wanted to concentrate on a, on a core for graph query language, so not, don't take this as a full-fledged uh, <coughs> example there are, uh, or a full-fledged proposal. There are uh, things which you deliberately not considered because we concentrated um, on, on the core for querying. So for instance, uh, one thing which we not considered deliberately is um, manipulating the graph data. So which is just really a, a query language in the uh, core sense of querying. And <clears throat> what we wanted to achieve for that core uh, in G-Core is that uh, all the query uh, uh, mechanisms that are defined there are efficiently evaluatable. Um, so that you can uh, build a system um, <clears throat> where all the, uh, the where the query evaluation stays tractable, no matter what query you formulate in the language. So the language does not allow you to formulate a query which is uh, cannot be evaluated with a tractable algorithm, which is a, a strong um, <clears throat> theoretical um, uh, guarantee which this language gives. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the main uh, time I, I want to spend on is talking about the uh, 
the, the closeness of the language and how you can use that for query composability. And the, the, the uh, second main part is on paths. So why is query composition um, uh, very important for modern query languages? Um, <clears throat> because what we see today is that uh, a lot of data is um, captured either automatically or typically somewhere else. So like back in the 80s, uh, we designed database systems and usually the people who consumed the data were the same uh, who fed the data into the system. But nowadays, it's that, that's uh, not the same anymore. The data comes from somewhere else. Um, <clears throat> and the effect of that is that th your base data, so the data which is stored in the database system, is typically very f uh, 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 f has a very fine granularity, um, <clears throat> a low abstraction. So for instance, in, um, <clears throat> to, to give you an example to illustrate that, um, your database would store individual Twitter messages, retweet relationships, something like that. Um, and of, on the other hand, when, when you as a user go to, these, um, uh, go to this data, um, in particular for analytical tasks, um, <clears throat> you usually talk not about these uh, uh, low-level concepts, but about um, high-level abstractions of that, like uh, on, on such uh, Twitter data, you would be interested in communities, uh, discussion topics, uh, discussion threads, etc. And these are all uh, concepts which are not in the base data. So you need um, to abstract from the base data to do actually uh, <clears throat> things with these uh, higher-level concepts. And often, you have multiple of these ab abstraction steps. Uh, for instance, you might uh, define first what is a, a discussion a discussion group, and then uh, you may define on, on the notion of discussion group what a community is, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, you um, <clears throat> to to be able to sort of cross this uh, uh, concept chasm, I call it. So this division or this gap between the concepts in the base data and the concepts you want to use as a user. Um, <clears throat> You need mechanisms uh, that, that allow you to do this abstraction, and of course, that should be your query language. Uh, <clears throat> um, and to do so, the query language needs to be composable so that you can um, uh, construct uh, or um, put multiple of these abstraction steps uh, uh, on top of each other. And if these are graphs down here, and you want to talk about um, higher level concepts, but also with graphs. Um, of course, you must be able to sort of create new graphs along the way. So define basically uh, uh, higher abstract graphs based on, on uh, low abstract graphs. And that should be all be doable in your query language. <clears throat> OK, how can it be done in uh, G-Core? Um, I will use this small graph here as an uh, example. It's basically a social graph. Um, inspired by the um, LDBC uh, benchmark data. So we have people with names and employees and uh, messages they uh, exchanged in a forum, etc. So the details are not so important. OK, as, as we have seen, to, to be able to abstract uh, a higher level graph from lower level graphs, we must be able to create graphs in a query. Um, <clears throat> and for that, uh, uh, a G -core, every G-Core query has a construct clause. Uh, the, the other parts of the G-Core query, uh, match and where, is pretty much uh, like what you know from existing graph query languages uh, like Cypher or uh, PGQL. Um, so it uses this ASCII art syntax to define uh, a pattern. You can say on which graph you want to match, and you have the where clause to add additional uh, predicates. Um, <clears throat> as we have already learned from uh, Stefan's talk earlier. So uh, what, what is basically new in G-Core is this uh, construct clause, which defines um, <clears throat> uh, what your output looks like. And the output uh, for, for G-Core query is always a graph. Um, <clears throat> and what we do is we recycle the pattern syntax to also specify a pattern here, um, which is then uh, instantiated for every uh, um, result of the match clause. So in that case, the output would be uh, 
um, for every match we will just output one node and since this variable appears also in the match clause it would be exactly uh, the, uh, <coughs> the node which we have matched here, the person node. So the output graph would consist just of nodes, uh, no edges, and they would uh, contain all the person nodes from this uh, social graph where the employer is AC. Um, of course, you, don't, uh, you not only want to create uh, nodes, but you also want to create um, <coughs> uh, edges. Um, you can do that by specifying an edge in your um, construction pattern. Uh, <clears throat> and what uh, this query shows is um, sort of a data, data integration uh, scenario. So um, the match clause matches on two graphs, the, the social graph we saw in the example and some uh, imaginary um, company graph. In the social graph, we match persons. And in the company graph, we match um, companies. And then we uh, look for a sort of a, we, do, we do a, sort of do a join um, <clears throat> where the company name is mentioned in the uh, list of employee names in the, uh, for the person. And for those pairs of uh, companies and persons, we would create um, <clears throat> an edge between those. So that we get a graph of companies and names and uh, edges which show who works where. And then what we uh, could do, um, we could join this with the original, uh, sorry, union this with the original um, social graph so that the original social graph is sort of augmented um, <clears throat> or that the output is an augmented version of the uh, social graph where we also have the company name, uh, the company nodes and the works at edges. <clears throat> But note that this uh, query would not modify the social graph. So it's just that the output would also contain everything that the social graph contains. Um, <clears throat> then in the graph construction, we can uh, do more. So we can really create new things, new nodes, new edges. Um, so assume we only consider the social graph and match the persons again. And now want to turn the, the um, um, employers mentioned uh, in this property into nodes, huh? like, like a normalization step for graph databases you could, can think of. Um, so then we could introduce a new node by giving it a variable, which is not mentioned in the match pattern, and say, OK, we want to create a new node with the label company, and the name should be the, the names we find here in the employee uh, property. And then we link this new node to the person who works for that company. <clears throat> this would give, give, give us multiple, uh, or the, the problem with that query, formalization, uh, uh, query formulation is that it would give us, for every mentioning of uh, a company here, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, a company node. So if two people work for IBM, we would get two IBM nodes. But of course, we would want to have just one IBM node, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, this you can also do in G-Core um, because you can group the creation of a graph object like a node. So you can say I want to create new nodes X uh, grouped by uh, E, which is the employee name. Right? And then you would uh, create an, a new node X only for each distinct employee name. So if you have two persons working for IBM, you would just create one uh, node for IBM. But still, those two persons would be linked with this new edge to the IBM node. <clears throat> so in, uh, in, in that sense, it's uh, pretty intuitive uh, of, of what happens here. Um, <clears throat> when you group, then of course you can also aggregate. So it's very uh, uh, simple to, for instance, have uh, um, augment this uh, company node, for instance, with the number of employees. Um, by adding a property here and uh, with an aggregation function which counts all the, uh, sorry, it's a mistake, not all the x, but all the uh, uh, n. And then you would, uh, would uh, count all the uh, <clears throat> uh, persons who have this uh, uh, e, like the company IBM mentioned here, as an employer. <clears throat> and when you create multiple new nodes, uh, they can have different groupings. 
Uh, and so you can also, involved with one query, um, uh, compute uh, different uh, aggregations over different groupings. <clears throat> As said, you can with the union you can sort of augment uh, a graph or have uh, uh, compute augmented versions of, of uh, base graphs. Uh, with a union you can also do that in a construct clause by just mentioning the graph here um, as sort of the simplest uh, pattern you can have. So it would be the same thing. The query would compute um, these, uh, or the result of the query would be the social graph uh, union with everything which is produced for by, by this. Uh, pattern. And again, this is no base data manipulation, um, so the graph to which we refer here stays the same, it's just that the um, output of the query contains everything which also the uh, base data contained, plus the uh, uh, <coughs> additionally created nodes and edges. Um, then of course you can uh, also query for reachabilities, uh, as we know from other query languages. Um, <coughs> So you will use the um, syntax with uh, double slashes to distinguish it, uh, 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 the querying for paths clearly from um, querying for uh, edges. And then you have um, syntax as you would expect for regular um, path queries. So you can uh, have regular expression over labels here to specify well, which paths uh, you are looking for. Um, also similar to what um, Stefan mentioned in his talk earlier. Um, then is uh, one additional thing uh, which I want to mention is here. We, here we in the where clause we see a predicate which consists just of a pattern, um, <clears throat> and the semantics of that is uh, that's an existential um, uh, predicate. So the predicate is true if for the the bound variables n and m, this uh, graph pattern exists in the graph. And since our query language is uh, uh, composable, we can actually define that as a, um, as a syntactical shortcut of really a subquery, an existential subquery, which is just shown in that, uh, on that slide. So this is the same query again. And, and this uh, predicate is just a syntactical shorthand for actually having an exist with a uh, full-fledged um, <coughs> uh, G-core query as a subquery where the match pattern is exactly what we have here. Um, <clears throat> so here you can see that um, the, when, when you define or, or de design a query language in this uh, composable and closed way, then uh, you already get a benefit out of that uh, so that you can have uh, uh, <clears throat> special, synt uh, special syntax without defining additional semantics, which is sort of rewriting to what you already have. Uh, another benefit of having a, co a compositional query language is that it's easy to um, define v views. Um, so you can think of uh, that, that you can have a statement, uh, create a graph view, you give it a name, uh, and then as, and then a G-core query. And that would define you a view uh, which exposes uh, a graph, and uh, the graph would be exactly the uh, graph created by uh, this query here. Other features we see is that uh, you can have optional matching, um, so outer join semantics. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So what this uh, query actually uh, creates is, or, or when we look at the view, the graph we see from, from this uh, view would be the um, uh, <clears throat> original social graph we have seen augmented by additional uh, edges uh, which uh, where each edge between two persons have the number of uh, messages which these persons uh, exchanged. Like these two persons here have exchanged uh, two messages, um, so the number is two. And this is something you can uh, compute with uh, GCOG queries. Um, <clears throat> so let's now uh, come to um, paths as first class citizen. Um, <clears throat> so the idea is uh, basically to make paths first class citizens is uh, that paths also can be objects. So you can query them uh, and then uh, 
uh, objectify them by sort of creating uh, a, a new kind of object which represents uh, that, that path you have queried. And when, the, when we turn the path into an object, you are also uh, able, of course, to attach labels, to attach properties, so all the nice things you know from edges and uh, nodes. Um, and how would you do that? Um, well, you would have a, a match query uh, with a regular expression again. Um, and if you um, assign that path pattern a variable um, p, then uh, that variable is bound to that path. And when you construct a new graph, um, <clears throat> you can include this, this path. Um, <clears throat> and what you would get first is, of course, all the nodes and edges that pa this path consists of. Um, and, and then you can also say, oh, I also want to have this path object. And you do this with the letter at here. And then you are able to give this path object a label. You can say, OK, all uh, uh, this, this path uh, describes local people, and it has a certain distance. Uh, <clears throat> where do you get the distance from? Um, this you do in the match clause. You can uh, specify um, <clears throat> a variable for the cost. So the, when then the path is matched, then this uh, variable c here would be bound to the, to the cost of the path. What is the cost of the path? Well, that um, depends. If nothing spe uh, is um, specified, then it's just the hop distance, so number of edges. Um, <clears throat> and as we will see later, we could also have uh, a weighted um, cost. Um, <clears throat> an additional thing um, of G-Core is that when you query for paths, it's always shortest path semantics. That is a, a crucial property to make the query language tractable. So with other um, uh, path semantics, you easily get a query language which is not, which is not tractable anymore. Um, <clears throat> but what is possible that you not only query for the very shortest, the shortest path, but for a number of shortest paths. That is uh, also a possible in a tractable way. Um, so that you can say in GCore, oh, give me three shortest paths uh, 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 <clears throat> for this uh, regular path pattern. So what this query basically what gives us is the three shortest paths, uh, starting from uh, a user named uh, John Doe to uh, other users that uh, John Doe knows, um, or reachable over nose edges, um, <clears throat> and who live in the same uh, city, which we have here with the extensional subquery. How now can we do weighted shortest paths? So not hop distance, but uh, is that a question? Um, no, this doesn't create here, this doesn't create, uh, so the question is, um, if I bound three shortest paths, um, would I create three edges up here? Um, fir first answer is, this doesn't create an edge. It's with uh, slashes, so it creates paths. And then there are two, I tried to explain that there are two uh, ways how that can happen. The, the first way is that you just get all the nodes and edges along these paths in your result graph. But then, so then you basically would have what makes the path, but not a new path object. To also get the path object to be able to assign um, <clears throat> uh, labels and properties, you have to add this uh, add sign here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and when you have uh, three shortest paths, then you can think of you would, uh, for one binding of n and m, you will get three bindings of uh, p. So on your binding table, it would have basically three tuples then. <clears throat> okay, um, so from hop distance to uh, weighted shortest paths. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for that, uh, GCore includes the possibility to uh, describe path macros. So a, a way where you uh, specify uh, what the path should look like. And this is done with the keyword path. And then we give this macro a name and say equals, and then come the specification of the path macro. So the first thing is, and you just specify the path macro by specifying a path step. Um, so a fixed length, or not necessarily fixed length, 
but in the uh, simplest case, if, if a fixed length uh, path pattern from X to Y, to, or from some node to another node, like in that case, it's just one uh, uh, nose edge, but it could be multiple of those and also in uh, 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 forward or backward direction. And then you can have uh, my, uh, further constraints on these um, <clears throat> uh, variables. And you can also specify um, a cost function with the keyword costs here. So that is not to be confused with the cost keyword uh, in the uh, match pattern, but in the uh, path clause, the cost uh, keyword uh, <coughs> tells us what, how to compute the cost. And in that case, we'll just say, oh, the cost of one of these path steps is uh, more or less the reciprocal um, of the number of edges. So the more edges, the lower the cost, the sh and the shorter the path, so to say. Uh, and when you have such a path pattern, then of course you can uh, query again for shortest paths uh, over that uh, uh, pattern. Um, <clears throat> and then you would get weighted shortest path semantics. So you would actually find in that case um, <clears throat> um, all uh, people, or the, the sort of the, the, the socially closest people to uh, who John Doe knows. Um, um, who are, have also shared an interest in, into uh, the composer, uh, composer Wagner in that case. So you can do with that, you are really able to express analytical uh, uh, queries, so to say. Uh, <clears throat> and here in the construct clause, what we do is um, we have the add again. So these paths we find are actually uh, added as objects to the output graph. And uh, how, that that look how does that look like is that we have the um, original graph from the view and additionally uh, objects with, which uh, specify us uh, the, the paths we have find with the query. <clears throat> okay, with, with that I'm uh, more or less done. So there are what, what, what are things that we think are missing for now? Um, of course, to be really useful, uh, a query language must um, be also be able to sort of um, <clears throat> um, go out to, to uh, existing data pods, um, which are usually um, relational data. Um <clears throat> so you want to have a way to also uh, have relational data, tabular data as a result um, to be able to um, feed um <clears throat> tabular data into um, the query mechanisms, et cetera. But these, these are uh, things we have discussed but not considered in detail yet. Okay, what is the takeaway? Uh, the takeaway is that uh, GCore is uh, a query language proposal, first of all, uh, which, which tries to um, uh, propose where graph query languages uh, should develop to, so what are desirable features. Um, and it's designed in a way that it's closed, composable, uh, and tractable. So in that sense, you can argue that it's, that it's well designed. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, and it's the outcome of uh, two or two and a half week, uh, years um, of work by a mixed group of people um, from academia and industry. So it really combines, and in that sense, it's sort of the first proposal doing that, it combines two uh, domains of experiences into uh, one design, so to say. Um, if you're interested in uh, LDBC work, there will be um, a technical uh, user community meeting uh, in, in Austin in, in, uh, when, when Sigmod takes place there in June. Um, and these two links uh, guide you to the GCore paper and to uh, a parser implementation for the query languages. And with that, I'm uh, done, and thank you for listening, and I'm open to your questions. Any questions for us? Yes. Um, I, I think you're going to embrace interoperability, so in the future, as a future goal. I was wondering, I haven't seen anyone from Apache Tinker uh, where their claim is already to, to have some interoperability across some graph databases.
Um, so the the um, so the question was why is uh, no Apache Tinkerbox people involved? Um, <clears throat> uh, the the language task force um, is was an open community, so people were free to join, and um, apparently no Tinkerbox people uh, were involved. Um, apparently they were not interested in. I don't know. Then a second question. Do you think from your perspective, is there an interoperability problem between your approach and the Tinkerbox approach by Gremlin? I think this, this, these are, so the question is, uh, <clears throat> is this query language inter, uh, interoperable with uh, um, Gremlin from Apache Tinkerbox? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, th I think these, the the uh, this language, uh, like also Cypher and PGQL, um, are sort of on a different abstraction level or have a different uh, target than uh, <clears throat> Gremlin. Gremlin really comes from um, a more uh, imperative approach of specifying uh, uh, traverses uh, over pa over graphs, uh, while here these uh, languages. Um, Come strictly from have, having a declarative language which, which builds on graph patterns, so at different uh, 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 angles. Um, <clears throat> and a more general, for a more general answer, I would refer to a, a, a project Stefan mentioned that uh, there is work that tries to sort of reconsolidate these uh, things and tries to implement Cypher on Gremlin. And if that is doable, then it would be also doable for GCore. Welcome. More questions? Okay, cool. Then thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah.